spaceship on the moon by Phil Tal by 2015. Uh, so I want to mention that we're sending someone to the moon. Well, it's not someone, it's going to be all of us. We're all going to the moon. It's a robotic craft about this height, and we want the entire Jewish nation, the Israeli nation, to be part of our mission. Uh, Space Science is sending a very small spaceship to the moon, but our goals are much bigger than that. We want a small spaceship to make a huge change for Israel. We believe that science, uh, technology, should be part of the Israeli vision. So I mentioned it today, it's a problem not only in Israel, in the entire Western world. Kids today are less inclined to go study engineering, science, math, and we're there to help. We like to say that if I can impact 5% of the Israeli kids with my mission, I've won way before going to the moon. If I can make 5% of the Israeli kids turn towards science and engineering, we'll have the next generation of startup nation 20 years from now. That's our vision, that's our goal. Besides going uh, inspiring kids uh, to science and uh, technology, we're also promoting science and technology itself. Uh, one of our board members, uh, Professor Ben Israel, is also the chairman of the Israeli Space Agency, uh, told us that for him, Space Israel is the uh, first sparrow, the arrowhead of uh, something that would become a new industry in Israel, the civilian space industry. So you'll have your high-tech industry that came from uh, units like Shmone Matayim and other intelligence core uh, intelligence corp units. And today we're spearheading a new industry that will come out of the uh, military space industry that is currently one of the leading ones uh, based in Israel. We're also promoting Israel's image. It's a great story about Israel. It's not why we're right and they're wrong. It's just Israel becoming the third nation or the third empire to land the moon. Prior to that, only the uh, Soviet Union and, the, of course, the US land the moon. And besides that, we're also part of a competition called the Google Lunar Express competition, which we're, of course, going to win. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we'll get to that in a few slides. So, where is Space Hail today? We started off uh, a year and a half ago, three uh, in the balloons, uh, going to the office of uh, Professor Ben Israel, the head of the Israeli Space Agency, and talking with him dead seriously about sending an Israeli spaceship to the moon. Instead of throwing us out of the room, uh, shouting and screaming, he told us, I'm with you. And today, the Israeli Space Agency has pledged two and a half million dollars to our project, which shows how serious they take our project. So we started a year and a half ago. Today, we're a national uh, project of a national uh, project of national importance, a private uh, entity, a non-profit in Israel. Uh, this picture was taken half a year ago in the Israeli aerospace industries. Uh, Shimon Peres, Rola Ramon, the wife of the late astronaut Hilal Ramon. Uh, some of our volunteers, we've got more than uh, 150 uh, uh, team members, most of them are volunteers, all joining hands in the Israeli aerospace industry to making sure that uh, uh, Israel is going to run in the moon. Uh, for us, that was a turning point when we understood that we have the eyes of an entire nation looking at us, waiting for us to land on the moon. It's a serious task. Shimon Peres is very much involved in what it is really believe uh, of this project. And actually, if anyone in this room wants to contribute us $4 million, he's going to get a detailed spaceship, the same size of the real spaceship, signed by Shimon Peres. He doesn't know about it yet, but I'm sure he will sign it. So if anyone wants, you can sell it to me, they for a lot of money. <laughs> but you're not allowed to send it to the moon. Only we can do that. So Space Air works with a lot of partners. We've, uh, in the past year and a half, we collaborated with a lot of partners. The Israel aerospace industry, for instance, has pledged three and a half million dollar support in engineering hours and facilities and testing equipment. We can't really build a spaceship in Israel without IAI, and luckily we have them on our side. Elbit as well, we went to the CEO of Elbit and he just, he just said, after 10 minutes of presentation, he told us, guys, I'm with you, what do you need? He told him, we need from every uh, uh, electro-optics uh, system. He told him, we're going to get it for free. That's the level of support that we're receiving from Israel. Our offices are at Tel Aviv University. We've got scientists from uh, the uh, Technion. Uh, the Weizmann Institute is, we've got some amazing people, scientists and uh, professors from the Weizmann Institute helping us out. The Israeli Space Agency is supporting us. 
as I told you, our number one uh, volunteer or team member is the number one uh, citizen of Israel, the President Peres is with us, the Ramon Foundation. They believe that we can cha make a change in Israel. That's why they partner with, with us. Uh, we're going to get to that in a few slides. Uh, Space Hell has a lot of educational programs running. We want to impact kids way before we land the moon. Uh, all the uh, logos up there are also uh, uh, educational partners uh, for success. We've also managed to uh, uh, build a very strong public board. Uh, uh, Israeli chairman is Yanki Margalit, uh, former founder of Valadi. Our US uh, uh, chairman is uh, Zohar. We have Juan Ramon. We have Barry Alsman, he was the former uh, director of the uh, uh, space facility in uh, IAI. He knows how to build uh, spaceships, so it's good to have him on our side. Uh, we've got the president of the Weizmann Institute, the president of Tel Aviv University. This is a national effort, and we bring everyone who can help us to the mission. And just something relevant to you guys in Los Angeles. Five minutes ago, we added to our board uh, Jimmy, who used to be the mayor of Beverly Hills. And uh, very soon, we are going to announce two major CEOs in the US who are joining the US board. So it is going to, we are going to be more. Well, we are part of a competition, and the competition th started more than three years ago. As good Israelis, we registered on the last day possible. <laughs> well, registration was $50,000, we raised that in like 10 days, it was crazy. And uh, we registered on the last day, it was uh, really, we have a picture of the three of us clicking the mouse at the bank to wire the money to Google. Uh, since then, a uh, few teams dropped out of, the, out of the race, but when you start to really investigate and go to the uh, uh, websites of all our competitors and uh, doing some uh, business intelligence uh, uh, activities with the other service, you realize that there are only three competitors, three strong competitors in the race. So right now, Israel is uh, competing with uh, two commercial entities for the finish line of landing a spaceship on the moon by uh, 2015. Uh, the image below is, by the way, uh, uh, some of our volunteers in the uh, uh, clean room facility of uh, uh, IEI. That's where uh, uh, the building of the spaceship will, uh, will start next year. Uh, a little bit... By the way, about that, uh, you visited the NASA teams in uh, Palo Alto recently, and they really believe that Space IL is going to win this competition. Uh, they really believe in this project. Um, actually, assuming we will, they are going to give us a huge project to continue after we level the moon. Uh, actually, Jonathan, my, uh, one of my two partners, will be next week at NASA Ames just for that, uh, receiving information from NASA. After all, there's only one organization on Earth that has information about landing on the moon. And luckily, they're very supportive of Space Air. Uh, a little bit about how we design spaceship, uh, that's our current design, uh, like a, a radar image of it, it's going to be uh, covered with something called MLI, multi-level insulation, here you can see the inside of the uh, spaceship. Uh, what we're going to do is catch a ride. You can piggyback your way to space, and we're going to catch a ride to Earth's orbit. That's the uh, green circle around Earth, it's not Sun, it's Earth. And from there we have to use our own propulsion system to take us all the way to the Moon. That's the yellow, red, blue line that takes you all the way to the uh, spiral. We get a ride to roughly uh, 200 to 500 miles above Earth, about uh, on Earth's uh, orbit. From there, we have to travel for 200,000 miles all the way to the moon and perform a really uh, uh, complicated landing. You have to land your craft on the moon. You can't crash on it. You have to land, send back images, videos, an image, of course, of uh, uh, the spaceship with the Israeli flag on it, or else nobody will believe we went to the moon. So that's our way to the moon. Uh, I talked about the first part, catching the ride. Well, luckily for us today, you can catch your way to the moon, to, uh, to Earth's orbit. To your left, you see a canopy, a white canopy, that uh, covers a full-size satellite. Your regular communication satellite or uh, a vision satellite works for 10, 15 years, weighs a few tons and costs roughly half a billion dollars. That's the cost of a communication satellite program. In the middle you can see a yellow ring, and around it you can see secondary payloads. A, a full-size satellite costs half a billion dollars. The Space IL entire program 
cost $30 million in budget. So that's the ratio between sending a full-size uh, uh, satellite and sending a small spaceship to the moon. And by the way, just to give you some numbers, because size, size doesn't matter in the US, but numbers are, it took NASA $400 billion to send the Apollo to the moon. We are going to do it for $27 million. So I believe we are quite good. Uh, by the way, last time, not sure I have you, last month we had a review of uh, over 20 engineers from the Israeli aerospace industries going over all our plans, our budget, and everything, making sure we're uh, on course, making sure that we uh, don't have any un unanticipated problems. So far, the, well, they've pledged three and a half million dollars, so I guess we're on the right course. A uh, bit about size, to your left you can see the Apollo 11 lander. Next to it, you've got uh, Neil Armstrong. And that little speck to the right, well, that's the Israeli spaceship. That's how small it's going to be. Uh, most of it is going to be a propulsion system. Uh, it takes a lot of fuel to get you to the moon. It takes a lot of fuel to decelerate. I can't use parachutes. I can't use anything to stop me down. There's no atmosphere. I have to burn fuel to slow myself down from uh, uh, two miles per second to a complete stop on the uh, uh, moon. We go over there. Uh, a uh, little bit about how you design a spaceship. Uh, seven small steps to designing a spaceship. It starts with good management. It continues with uh, uh, system engineering, making sure that people are using the same voltage all over the spaceship, the same uh, nuts and bolts. It continues with the different modules, uh, attitude control, optics, avionics, propulsion, thermal considerations. Uh, from there you go to the ground station. You must have a few ground stations to cover to receive 24-7 uh, coverage. Uh, then you go to the assembly, integration, and testing. That's when uh, the uh, spaceship will go uh, severe testing of the uh, shocks, thermal uh, cycles, crazy things. And they've got an amazing facility in the Israel Aerospace Industries, which just tortures your spaceship. Uh, from there, it's the launcher integration. As uh, I told you, we're catching the light on a, a larger launcher. And it's a whole, it's to get a book when you sign the contract for all the things you have to stand uh, to when you uh, attach yourself to the launcher. And the last part is the mission. From the minute your spaceship leaves your lab until it goes up to the launcher and all the way to the moon. And uh, you must have a really uh, ordered mission with only uh, possible junctions and making sure that you know what you do on uh, each step. The big timeline, 2011 was the startup year when we raised all our partners, all our supporters. 2012, by the end of 2012, we're going to uh, finish our uh, funding. Uh, right now, we're uh, uh, missing $50 million out of the 30, so we have a few uh, slots for a few more supporters. Uh, 2013 and 2014 will be the years of the uh, construction, the testing, the assembly, all those uh, uh, parts. And by 2015, we're going to be uh, launched on our way to the moon. Well, I started off by telling you that Space Air is an Israeli non-profit. We're an educational non-profit, and we're going to end by that. Uh, Space Air has a few uh, uh, programs in Israel already running. We've reached more than 12,000 kids in Israel, and we're working on a nationwide program to impact all the kids of Israel with the Weizmann Institute. And uh, I'm going to show you one small uh, Program, another program that we're running. Uh, these kids are from the President Elite Kids of Israel. These are the future scientists of Israel. We gave them a real task. They are choosing where the Israeli spaceship belongs to the moon. And they're collaborating with NASA, and right now they're working on selecting a few spots that the Israeli spaceship will land. Now think about it, you're 14 years old, you get to choose where the Israeli spaceship will land. Well, you're hooked for life on science and space on deep space exploration, and that's the impact that we want to give the entire uh, kids of Israel with the mission. So, Space Air is a, a national project supported by the President and the Israeli government. Our uh, key objective is making Israel strong in the future. We've got full in uh, industry and governmental support. We're going to win the X Prize. And the spaceship is a tool. We like to say that it's a small spaceship that is going to make a new change for Israel. 2015, we're going to land. And last word, you know, we are doing it because we enjoy it, because we love it, because we love Israel, and we are going to contribute everything for it to Israel, and that we will win. But we need your support. So any support can help, you know, there is a guy who got